Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. In this video, we'll talk about something very funny and very stupid. Uh, maybe we did not talk about before, uh, or maybe I mentioned it before in old video. I'm not sure. Uh, however, there is many, many, many hadith in Islam we never talk about. There is millions of them actually, uh, but always we focus in refuting Muslims mostly. This is why we don't talk about them. Uh, however, before I go there, someone he sent me uh, an, an, uh, a question asking me how I can find the best book to read. Now, for sure, me, myself, uh, uh, if I, somebody asks me, I will say, read my book. Uh, but it might be sound like not, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like uh, maybe uh, he would think that I'm just saying that because it's my book. Uh, the reason I say that you need to read my book uh, before we go to the other topic about the funny hadith, if you read, if you look in Amazon, all the books we see, regardless it's made by who, made by Muslims, by Christians, by etc. First, I advise you never, never read a book about Islam made by Muslim, a Muslim convert as an example, uh, or an, an Arab Muslim. Why? Because someone who is in love with something, he will present for you the, the best image of it. Because simply he don't see anything wrong, wrong with it. Because this is why he is he's in love. Otherwise he will not be in love. So number one rule: don't ever buy a book or read a book written by a Muslim unless it's in Arabic, and in order to learn about Islam uh, uh, and you know to find uh, more resource for your knowledge. But in English, all those books is done for marketing of Islam. Now, what about books made by Christians or even atheists? You know, like we have many uh, uh, well-named, like Robert Spencer. I have a, a total respect for this person because he is one of the first Western who stand up to expose Islam. So I have a special respect for those people who do so. However, still those people, their, their, their knowledge of Islam is very limited because simply they don't have access to the heritage of Islam. You know, in case you do not know, not even not even one percent of the Islamic library. Uh, if I say if I say one percent, I'm exaggerating. I don't think even one zero one 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 percent is is it translated. Because Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim is nothing really. Those are small books comparing to what we are talking about. Uh, so how those people they can really tell you about Islam and teach you about Islam? I don't, I don't think they will be able to do so they learn from what is translated already and what is translated is very limited so what they learn is very limited still now what about those stars we see for books you know five stars four stars three stars those stars really mean nothing for me uh, including my book too because people who support me they will give me five stars muslims who hate me they will give me one star so what is the honesty five stars mean nothing and actually, if you go and check the, the, the review of books, you will find that many of those who review, as an example here, we go Nabil Qurashi. Before we see the review, uh, as an example, Nabil Qurashi, I have a lot of respect for this person. I really love this brother. Uh, but Nabil Qurashi, he himself, as an ex-Muslim, is he really knowledgeable about Islam? Uh, I will say he's far away from knowledge. Why? Because simply, he is the same as Shabir Ali. Same as many who is coming from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, whatever, those countries who they don't speak Arabic. So what they know about Islam is very limited. Something they learn from their school, which is very limited, which is giving good idea about Islam and giving false titles and they copy paste. As an example, in the last debate, Mr. Uh, Nabil, he, uh, he said that Islam means submission, which is absolutely wrong, you know. And he, as an ex-Muslim, doesn't mean he knows Islam. Uh, knowing, knowing the religion is something, and being one of it by birth is something else. And I notice all those who don't speak Arabic, they are the same. Zakir Naik, Shabir Ali, it's the same, copy-paste, but none of them really have a deep knowledge of Islam. This is why they cannot stand for a debate. This is why you will see Shabir Ali, he debate. Uh, Nabil Qureshi because he understand that he have a very high possibility maybe he will win but he will not, never debate with me because he know he's no match and number one reason for him he know he's no match because he don't speak Arabic I do that's a that is a major reason not just because I have additional to that I have degrees in Islam and my degrees are real not from the uh, uh, University of Toronto 
you know, or reverse University of Canada, you know, how a, a Canadian university, if you're, you know, once somebody asks me, why don't PhD, do PhD? Uh, so they encouraged me to do it and I contact a university and then I called the dean of the school and we talked to, to the person and then he said to me, by the way, I do not know much about Islam. I, most, most of the things I learned is from someone, by the way, he have the same voice as yours, even his accent. So I found out that the one who will give me PhD, he himself is learning from me. And I said to myself, this is really stupid. It's hypocrisy. I will spend a lot of money. I will spend three years to get a PhD. And then the, the person who will give it to me, he is learning from me. So the point is, those who don't speak Arabic, know Arabic very well, they have a very limited access to the knowledge, which means they will not give you real knowledge. I'm not saying don't treat the book of Robert Spencer or Nabil Qureshi. I'm not saying that. I'm saying facts. And stars mean nothing. If you go right now <clears throat> to Nabil Qureshi book, I never read the book, so I have no idea really how good or how, or how bad it is. Uh, but if you go to the to the review, you will see all the Muslims give him one star. Very simple. If you check it out, here we go. <coughs> And you will see that those who give him one star, they did not even buy the book. You see here, it doesn't say verified purchase. No verified purchase. No verified purchase, which means they never bought the book. And look, this guy, he's making a study article. But the fact, he never bought the book. How someone who never wrote, never bought the book, he make a, a review. So uh, the, the five stars, six stars, seven stars, ten stars, they mean nothing because most of it is written or driven by uh, emotion. People who they are Muslims, they go against you. People who they are Christian, they sponsor you. And it's real, really, to find a real uh, review uh, going deep in details. Those reviews in Amazon can work if you are going to buy a camera. Someone explained to you that the battery is, <laughs> you know, is not working good, etc. because in here there's no emotion involved. But when it's come to religion, emotion <clears throat> is involved very much. Like if you go to my book, this is in Kindle, if you go to my book, I have five review, all of them five stars. But is it really truly my, my book five stars? I don't know. Uh, but I believe uh, in the same time that people who make it five stars, they are driven by emotion too. Uh, because uh, all of those who, who give it, mostly or most likely, they are supporting me. So I don't go by five stars. I go by what is inside the book. Now, before we move to the continue on the topic, by the way, my book right now is available in papers for those who would like to order the book as a paperback. Uh, it's shipped by Amazon and ready to go. Now, so who is the one he can really give you a good insight or good good education about Islam? Number one, he have to speak Arabic because then he you will find in his books things you never heard before. The rest are just copy and paste from each other. Or they are copying from someone like me who speak Arabic. Number two, someone have degrees in Islam. I have degrees in Islam. I'm not only a native Arabic speaking, I am qualified to be a judge in Islamic court. Officially and legally. So I have degrees. Arabic is my first language. And then I have the knowledge and the skills. Uh, many of you know that I spend a big portion of my life just debating Muslims. So all those to, together they can make someone who can help you really to understand islam not someone making it as a hobby uh, today we will talk we, we we finished talking about books i hope you learned how to choose a book to read who is the one you can really read it from and uh, which where where you can find real information about religion so what i'm trying to say those who don't speak arabic they have a very limited access to islamic heritage Therefore, they will be very limited in the, in the way they can help you. However, still you can read their books. Uh, but if you are looking for something new, uh, something maybe you never heard before, not just a copy paste from each other, then it's better if you learn from someone who speak Arabic. Uh, as an example here, this is a book. Uh, the book, just to show the Muslims here, this is the book of Sunan al-Durami. And Sunan al-Durami is one of the Sunni book, which is considered as, as, a, as a Sahih Hadith too. Uh, 
Uh, however, the Muslim they list they, they have ranks for books, and there are six ranks of books uh, in the, uh, the Sahih, which means six books of Sahih. Uh, however, it doesn't mean that those books are not correct. Muslims they learn from them. This is why this is a very famous Sheikh, the one who owned this website. His name is Al-Sha'rawi. He was one of the famous in Egypt for uh, until he died, and uh, this is why he is uh, teach him from it because he as a scholar he learned from Ad Durami. So in here you will see that it says that if you want to go to the to to do poo poo, uh, you better put your uh, turn your butt to a cover like a rock or a wall or a sand hill. Because if you don't do that, shaitan or shayateen, they will play with your anus. And this is why Muslims, they have to make certain prayer before they enter the bathroom. Otherwise, shaitan play in his anus. Maybe he will put screwdriver. Now, how someone who don't speak Arabic, he will find this or he will learn about this or he can read it. No way. Same, same way if we, if we go to different uh, story as an example. In this story, supposedly, there is a guy who wanted to make fun of, uh, of uh, Miswak. An imam was making a lecture about miswak, so he made fun of miswak. And in the second day in the morning, uh, he found his uh, arm, arm, you know, the whole arm, like from your finger all the way to your shoulder. He found his arm, all of it, inside his anus. Now, if I don't speak Arabic, how I'm going to be able to read this, those books? Uh, which those stories exist in many books. So there is no way for me to be able to find them and read them and deliver them to someone else who don't speak uh, the language of the Arab unless me myself I speak Arabic so those who don't speak the language they miss a lot uh, as an example there's a story as long as we're talking about the miswak someone he made fun of the miswak and uh, Allah he punished him and he made him threaten it with uh, a rat you believe it actually I have a video for it let us watch it together. وصلوا إلى دمشق من أهل بصرى أن عندهم قرية يقال لها دير أبي سلامة وكان بها رجل من العربان فيه استهزاء زائد بالدين فجرى يوم ذكر السواك وهو جالس الشيخ عمل محاضرة كلها عن السواك خطبة جمعة كلها عن السواك فقال سواك ايه بس والله لا أستاق إلا من الدبر شفت الفاجر فاجر وبالفعل أدخل السواك في دبره فآلمه تلك الليل ثم مضى عليه تسعة أشهر وهو يشكو من ألم في بطنه وفي مخرجه ثم أصابه بعدها مثل طلق الحابل فوضع حيوانا على هيئة جرذون شبيه بالفأر كده صاح الحيوان ثلاث صيحات ثم قامت ابنة الرجل فضربته على رأسه فمات يعني الجرذون ولم يلبث الرجل بعدها إلا يومين Okay that's enough So this is stories you will never find out unless someone like this guy or someone like me, he speak Arabic, to show you how stupid this religion is. So you can imagine how much hiding story you never heard of, because simply you are reading or listening to people who speak only English. Um, so anyway, uh, before we finish, please inform your friends that my book as a paperback is now available. And um, please don't forget to post a review, but honest review, and tell your friends about it, and let us share the knowledge together. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to say my book is the best book, but I believe my book have things you never heard before, and this is what you need, not copy-paste. God bless you. Thank you very much. See you soon.